Hi, Pastor David here with a daily devotional for Monday, November 23rd, Thanksgiving week coming up. Um, this is the last of our videos in our Early Church Saints series. But before we start, um, our memory verse for this week is from Psalm 34, 8. Taste and see how the Lord is good. The one who takes refuge in him is truly happy. Psalm 34, 8. A good memory verse for Thanksgiving week as we all feast this week. Um, today we're going to, to the kind of uh, known as the end of the um, Christian early church era. And we are um, talking about what are known as the Cappadocian Fathers or the great, the three great Cappadocians. There's these giants of faith that were in the middle of Turkey and that day it was um, Galatia or Cappadocia. And the churches there had, were started by the Apostle Paul in his um, journeys. And then by the 300s is where we are now. There is these great spiritual giants that are um, really guiding the church through this time of clarifying what Christianity means and how to become Christians and how to, st and how to believe as Christians and forming of, and apologetics and forming of the Christian faith. Um, there were two, this, there's a, a, a key family here with two brothers of these great thinkers and their close friend. And all of them died in their late 300s. Um, they came from a family of prominent Christians. Their maternal grandfather was martyred as a Christian. Both their parents were considered saints in the Eastern Church. Um, and there's two siblings, two brothers, um, Basil and Gregory, and they were both bishops and monks and saints, by, because they're saints by all, the, all Christian churches. And they also had two other brothers. Um, one was a bishop, and both were saints as well. So a huge Christian family. Basil the Great, Basil, as we hear about in, in, in the name carried on, um, was the oldest and had the leader of the Cappadocians. Um, he was a bishop of Caesarea over in the Holy Land. Um, Gregory of Nizanzus, Nizanzus um, who was their good friend. He was a bishop of Nizanzus, um, and he also became bishop of Constantinople. He was the what became known as what would be the Eastern Church or the or the um, Eastern Orthodox Church. He became what was known as the the, the Pope of that church. Um, and he's, he's considered the greatest orator of the early patristic um, era. And then the, the, young, the younger brother is Gregory, um, who is Bishop of Nyssa. Uh, now we're talking about um, Eastern, Eastern, Eastern expression of faith. Here is an uh, icon, typical of the Eastern style of faith. This is Byzantine. Um, and this is certainly the, the style of faith that they're talking about. A lot of contemplation, a lot of focusing on the person of Jesus. And um, the, there's a great monastic order in the Eastern Church as well. Um, so they were all monastics. Um, it was actually their sister who converted the family estate to be a monastery for women and for men. Both, both, both were there. Um, and all the siblings were monastics. And all were saints and three were bishops. Um, and they pursued a spiritual life that focused on their faith in Jesus Christ rather than the religion, uh, the religion of the world and secularism and materialism around them. The pleasure that the world offered. So the first thing that we want to learn about, but learn about the Cappadocians, they were monastics and really propelled the monastic movement and how you give your whole self to Jesus. If you, and you weren't being living as a monastic, you certainly were to take on the pledges of a monastic to live for Jesus and not for the world. You have a different priority. Number two, they were very learned, well-educated leaders. Um, they were apologists and formers of Christian doctrine, classically trained. Their parents trained all of them, brothers and sisters, together and pushed them to hold their own among the Greek, the great Greek schools. And they were able to argue for the validation of the Christian faith um, among the most learned of Greeks. They were, these themselves became known as professors and, and, and Christian thinkers. And the Christians could be thinkers in science and in medicine, in, in um, all the classics of the world, that Christians were, were intellectually st st strong and that Christians thought hard and had good answers. And so they, 
they, they, they, they took up the battle against all things that were wrong. Uh, the sec secularism preached dr dramatically about the, the way of Jesus, as well as took up the picked up the mantle from Athanasius, you remember from his battles with the Arians. And, and the, the Cappadocians were the ones who really clinched the battle against um, the Arians after Athanasius passed away. The Cappadocians really argued um, so well that by the time of their death, no one was believing Arianism anymore. Arianism was just that Jesus is only human, not God himself. They also, um, the Cappadocians also clarified and fin helped finalize the form of the, of the Nicene Creed that we use today. It was their authorship that kind of created, created that. And the third piece I want you to know about the Cappadocians is that they have a very high view of women. Very strange for that era. Um, their sister was well-educated, and she wrote extensively, taught extensively, and they considered her their equal, both in learning and in piety. And so many people today think that they, that they, they, they should be called the four Cappadocians, including their sister in the group, because she was so influential. I want to read for you a couple quotes. And I'll only stick to um, Basil the Great, because that's all we have time for today. Um, one he said, a tree is known by its fruit, a man by his deeds. A good deed is never lost. He who sows courtesy reaps friendship. He who plants kindness gathers love. He was trying to get people to be gracious in the world and to be loving in their day-to-day -day lives, living out their faith. And he's also very, they're also very um, emphatic on helping and caring and blessing other people. And so one of his quotes was, um, the bread which you hold back belongs to the hungry. The coat which you guard in your locked storage closets belongs to the naked. The footwear moldering in your closet belongs to those without shoes. The silver that you, have keep, that you keep hidden in your safe um, belongs to those in need. Thus, however many are those whom you have provided for, there are many of those whom you wrong. So you may feel generous, but there are many more you should be helping. Very good key there. And the third one is good for Thanksgiving week this week. Preserve gratitude like a precious deposit within your soul, and from it you will receive a double portion of delight. Remember the apostolic word, give thanks in all circumstances. Gratitude, deep in your soul, plant it there. It will change your whole outlook for your whole word and give you delight. So, for our devotions today, three points to be thinking about and chewing on today. One, for monasticism. In what ways are you too attached to the pleasures of this world, too focused on material things, and not focused enough on Jesus? How can you run away from your material possessions and run towards Jesus, embracing him fully. Secondly is education. Learning about your faith so that you can talk eloquently and educatedly among others. Christians are still critical thinkers and we have bright thinking minds about our faith in God. And we can argue compellingly for our faith not being just a matter of the heart, but a matter of the mind as well. We can argue articulately. And thirdly, importantly for this week, is our sense of gratitude. Can we foster a life founded on gratitude this week, especially as Thanksgiving? And from that gratitude will come delight, that whole shalom peace of our, of our Christian life. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rich blessings you give us and you pour out blessing upon blessing. We are rich materially. And Lord, from that blessing come struggles to keep it in the right priority. We sometimes focus too much on our stuff and the pleasures of this world and the things of this world that we don't hold you precious and whole, Lord, in our lives. We ask you to, your Holy Spirit within us, to redirect our priorities, to flee the worldly pleasures and focus on you, Jesus. We also pray for um, our education, that you would in, enlighten our Christian faith, that we would have faith-seeking understanding and articulate our understanding and be in conversation with others to show that Christianity is rational and um, scientific and can, can hold its own in all debates and conversations. We talk about sometimes different things, but very real things. 
And Lord, help us to talk about our faith intelligibly. Learn, Help us learn about you, Jesus, more. And thirdly, Lord, we pray you would foster within us hearts of gratitude, that you may, this week especially, grow within us a delight of life with you, for we are founded on our gratefulness to you, Jesus, for all good things. In Christ's name we pray this, all this. Amen. Now, this coming up week, we have a special video on Thursday rather than Friday, Thursday instead for Thanksgiving. It's a video that it's a short video intended for you to use at your dining table when you're ready to eat your Thanksgiving meal. Whether you eat it with others or by yourself, get out your device, watch the video for the Thanksgiving prayers right before you eat your Thanksgiving meal. Or if you have lots of family and commotion around, you might want to do it a little bit earlier, right before the meal sometime. Then next week, we're starting our new Advent series. We're going to be, um, you'll be getting a mailing this week of a packet of things that you can take and use as a countdown towards Christmas. We'll start that um, next Sunday and Monday in our video. And we'll be, you'll be doing a Bible reading every day from now and from, from, when, from Sunday until Christmas. So lots coming up, and we're going to be together in many ways for our preparing for, for, for Christmas. Until then, happy Thanksgiving, and keep calm and carry God.